What we need to do is have calm discussion with as many of our fellow Americans as possible. I don't see people as the labels that others may apply to them, such as liberal, libertarian, conservative, or anything like that. I see them as my fellow men and women who may be walking on a misguided path, or they may be just like us as patriots, but still we all have our own grievances and our own solutions to the problem. We all know why we're here and what brought us to this event. Some may just be starting on their path to finding the truth in all of this, and some may have already found what others are seeking. And there's a few who disagree with us altogether because they are unwilling to under understand us. <clears throat> the truth as I see it, and a little insight into the nature of the situation we are all suffering under, is this. I believe that by complacency and the healing process of a civil war, where our government for the first time turned its military against its own people when secession was threatened. Through that healing process, we have allowed our federal government to slowly creep its way into our lives. <clears throat> By that I mean with the administrative agencies and, and all this stuff, and even the people that I heard speaking before, they talked to you about your Second Amendment right and your First Amendment right. In Oregon and in every other state in this union, they have their own constitutions that make them individual sovereign states. That's why you call them states. It's because a state is a government. We're not just ruled by one government, the federal government that rules over us from Washington, D.C. and through their bureaucrats in our, in our counties and in our states. So here's what I believe we need to... Um, <clears throat> what we need to do. I believe we need to end the complacency and instead of being reactive to the situations like that of the Hammonds and the Bundys, we need to be proactive. What I mean by that is that every chance we get as patriots, we should be asking the fellow men and women in our local communities and striking up conversations any chance we get. Okay asking them their opinions on the state of this country because we we all know what our opinion is of the state of this country it's messed up and something's got to happen So like I was saying, we need to get out in our local communities and we need to start striking up conversations every chance that we get so that it's not just the people here at this rally or other people that you know are upset with the government. What I'm trying to get at is that we need the whole community to get on board and to understand that our federal government has imposed so much into our lives and creeped so far into our lives that we don't even recognize our state constitutions anymore as an important thing in our lives. All we do is tell e each other that, you know, the the, that our state government is encroaching on our Second Amendment right. The United States Constitution is a binding contract on the federal government as to what they can and cannot do. Our, our state constitutions, the first article in there is the Bill of Rights. We have a Bill of Rights in our state and it enumerates our God-given rights and also the rights that are considered civil rights. <clears throat> the reason that I want you to begin talking to people in your communities is because I want you to start forming organizations in your communities that represent your communities as a whole so that you can speak to your politicians like they said in their speeches before, they want you to go into these marble whatevers, and they want you to speak. But when you do that, you would be speaking as individuals. But if you create an organization in your town, in your city, and in your county, you can represent the whole people in that town. 
and one person as a delegate, yeah, they could come down here and everybody doesn't have to waste their gas money. But they would be speaking on behalf of their whole community. So when that one person gets ignored, the whole community understands that the government is not listening to you. Now, what do you do when the government stops listening to you? I can't stand up here and be a radical and tell you what to do. The appeal to heaven is what it is. What are you willing to do and how far are you willing to go? I'm 25 years old. I'm ready to lay my life on the line, shoulder to shoulder next to all of you guys, if that's what's necessary. Now the Second Amendment, it does say the right to keep and bear arms, but that's not what it's about. It says a well-regulated militia being necessary to a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It says first that the militia is necessary to a free state. Congress has the obligation to set and prescribe the training and all this for the militia. And yeah, sure they do that. There's two separate classes of militia. The unorganized militia and the organized militia. That second one is organized by the government. The unorganized militia is all of us out here. We're part of that. Now, we have been without a militia, the unorganized kind. You know, maybe unorganized is sometimes confusing, but the people have the power to organize themselves. <clears throat> but we've been out without a militia for a very long time. And we have been unable to secure a free state in our nation. <clears throat> so, just like in Harney County, how they have a committee of safety down there, and like how I suggested to you guys that you need to start creating community organizations. You don't have to call it a committee of safety. You don't have to call it, you know, whatever else you see on the internet. You can just call it, like I live in Washington County, the Washington County General Association. The association of the people of the county and of the town. <clears throat> you know, I don't want to preach too much up here, but... Preach it! <laughs> We are the people and we need to stand up and we need to we need to start really testing the waters to see if the government really does listen to us. And the only way that that's going to happen is if we band together as our communities and start getting and start airing out what is the will of the people? What what do your neighbors think? If you talk to your neighbors sometimes about your grievances against the government, they might think you're crazy, but if you ask them what are your grievances against the government? then they'll be able to express and they'll be able to realize that yeah, we, we do have similar problems that are going on.